dogs were extremely valued in ancient Rome and other cultures. The Roman dog, especially, performed tasks as hunters, guardians, and companions. But, in the case of war dogs, this is an old military practice, generally used for intimidation, pursuit, combat, and tracking. In this video, we will cover the leading dog used in combat, the Canis Pugnax. The term Canis Pugnax refers to a breed that does not exist today. These dogs arose through the crossing of dogs of the Molossus breed, of Greek origin. Being large, hairy, and heavy, they were used to protect cattle and horses. In some cases, they were also trained to hunt and fight, being referred to by Greek and Roman philosophers, poets, and playwrights. Eventually, the Greek Molossus became extinct for unknown reasons, and we do not know when this happened. But the breed gave rise to three categories, Molossus, Bulldogs, and Mastiffs, categories that branched out into dozens of other breeds with common traits. In view of this diversity, some breeds were used by the Romans to breed war dogs. The use of dogs in the Roman army began even in the Republic. Yes, the Romans were already breeding dogs before that to be guards, hunters, and faithful companions. But as Rome grew, the number of armed conflicts increased. The conquest of territories and assimilation of cultures, traditions, and species of animals and plants were emerging in Roman culture. The Greeks, Germans, Gauls, and other peoples already used war dogs. The Romans realized the potential of this decision, although too late. To fulfill the role of guards and fighters in the arenas, the Romans crossed different breeds of molossus to achieve the model that suited their liking. Large dogs, about 60 centimeters tall, with a rough appearance, intimidating bark, weighing between 40 and 50 kilos, black in color, obedient, territorial, loyal, and fierce. The Roman molossus was specially adapted for fighting purposes, being called Canis Pugnax, or Fighting Dog. In the 4th century BC, fighting between gladiators became regular and prestigious in the Roman world. Besides fighting between men, combat with animals became frequent from a certain period of the 2nd century BC, both in hunts and in direct fighting between gladiators and animals. Wild animals such as lions, leopards, elephants, bears, and domestic animals such as bulls, horses, and dogs were used. Fights could include combat between animals only. In other cases, dogs and other animals were trained to do tricks. These animals were also used to intimidate or execute prisoners and criminals. The ferocious animals were released into the arena after being subjected to a period of fasting. Their death had to be spectacular. In many cases, there was a kind of race with bulls or rhinos, fights between animals, and also hunts where the animals chased unarmed men who ended up torn to pieces. Much attention was paid to the scenography, which tried to recreate the natural environment of the beasts. The Canis Pugnax was intended to be used in the arenas, in the deadly games between gladiators. But the Romans realized that these fighting dogs could be added to the army. As we said above, many peoples already had war dogs. In fact, as the Roman domains annexed parts of Gaul, Germania, and Britannia, the Romans learned about other dog breeds, crossing them with their own molossus. This gave rise to new breeds of Pugnax Canis. But these dogs were not mistreated at all. They were highly honored and well cared for. Often, the owner's reputation and livelihood depended on the dog's performance in a fight. Therefore, they received more care and attention than many of the slaves in Rome or some of their relatives. Sometimes, the Romans had to face war dogs in conflicts with the Germanics and Celts. In the Battle of Fracale against the Cimbri in 101 BC, they fought fierce animals. The dogs quarreled with the Romans, even when their owners were already dead or enslaved. They also defended the fortified camp of the Cimbri more effectively and for longer. The Romans were only able to storm the fortifications after killing all the animals. Some time later, still in the 1st century BC, the use of war dogs by the Roman armies came into consideration when Julius Caesar and other generals invaded Gaul and Britannia. 
the Romans faced these dogs again and became more interested in their use in other military campaigns. War training was not simple. The dog had to live with the entire court, distinguish friends from enemies by smell, clothing, and armor. Smell was the dog's most important ability. Therefore, they had to socialize with and accept food from all the legionnaires of the garrison in the castra, land used as camps or defensive positions. Dogs also had to learn verbal commands. If a stranger entered the camp with a specific order, the animal did not have to pounce on him as if facing an enemy. Dogs had to respect the order of attack in a battle, but all the various calls and the order to stop or return when needed. Unlike barbarian war dogs that attacked any foreign intervention, Roman dogs obeyed orders as if they were soldiers. The Canis Pugnax was strong, combative, and brave, but also agile and fast. It could cover considerable distances daily on the plains and mountains, withstanding all kinds of weather. The Roman legions moved on foot over distances of up to 35 kilometers a day, with a heavy load on their backs. They also had to clear a large piece of land and build a castrum from scratch to spend the night. Meanwhile, dogs, as well as sentries, ensured that no one approached the camp. The construction of a Roman camp was the most dangerous time for legionnaires. In case they were being spied upon, the enemies had a good opportunity to attack them. Dismantling the castrum was also dangerous because they had to remove the tents, the altars, and the fence, pack everything, load the wagons, and feed the animals and themselves, not least because it was difficult to do this while moving. Dogs were particularly important as protection on these occasions. But the use of dogs by the Roman army was not as common as some people think. There are few accounts of dogs used on the battlefield, although there is the possibility that some authors did not give such importance to these animals. Perhaps this is why they disregarded their presence in the camps, and even though they were important in combat and guarding. Interestingly, the Greeks have more accounts of the use of war dogs than the Romans. There are even records that King Philip II of Macedon and Alexander the Great highly esteemed these animals, even serving as guard dogs. In the Roman case, reporters of the use of war dogs are scarcer. This suggests that it was not something usual in the army. Generally, poets and writers extolled dogs as guard, hunting, and fighting animals in the arenas, but barely spoke of their use on the battlefield. The historian Publius Tacitus wrote the presence of the gods in camps and bases, acting as guards. Sometimes they were used to intimidate prisoners and capture fugitives, but such use in battle was not regular. Tacitus also wrote that the legions in Germania, Britannia, Dacia, and Thrace used more guard dogs than usual. During the reign of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, the Romans used Pugnax Canis in warfare, according to the monument dedicated to the emperor. The column of Marcus Aurelius, completed in 193 AD after the emperor's death, shows dogs used in some campaigns, but we do not know what their purpose was. Were they guard and tracking dogs, or were they used in battles? We cannot deny that dogs were an important part of Roman life and culture. They were treated as if they were family members. When they died, they were even honored with tombs and gravestones. I want to know your opinion too, so write what you think about this relationship between the ancient Romans and dogs, in addition to their use in combat and in guarding the legionaries. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to our channel.